Welcome to Billerica Public Library's Book Buzz. Listen to hear about some of the great May releases that Billerica and Merrimack Valley Consortium own. Our first genre is contemporary fiction. Audrey by Jennifer Saint. Audrey, Princess of Great, grows up greeting the dawn from her beautiful dancing floor, listening to her nursemaid stories of gods and heroes. But beneath her golden palace echoes the ever-present hoofbeats of her brother, the Minotaur, a monster who demands a blood sacrifice. When Theseus, Prince of Athens, arrives to vanquish the beast, Audrey sees in his green eyes not a threat, but an escape. Defying the gods, betraying her family and country, and risking everything for love, Andrea helps the Saurus kill the Minotaur. But will Andrea's decision ensure her happy ending? And what of Petria, the beloved youngest sister, she leaves behind? Cheat Day by Liv Stratman. Kit and David were college sweethearts. Now married and 12 years older, they live in Kit's childhood home in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. While David has a successful career jetting off on work trips to exotic destination, Kit is stuck in a loop. She keeps quitting her job managing her sister's bakery to seek a more ambitious profession, but fear of failure always brings her right back to the sweet cheeks. Kit finds solace in cycling through fad diets, which David, in his effort to be supportive, follows along with her. Their latest program is the Radiant Regimen, an intense 75-day cleanse. Kit is optimistic about embarking on a new chapter of clean eating and self-control. But hungry in more ways than one, she soon falls into a flirtation with a carpenter named Matt, who is building new shelves for the bakery kitchen. Unable to resist their mutual attraction, Kit and Matt fall into an impassionate affair. Kit suppresses the guilt of her betrayal by adhering more and more strictly to the radiant regiment, pushing the diet and her infidelity to greater extremes. The Girl with Stars in Her Eyes by Zyle Axelrod. Growing up in dive bars up and down the East Coast, Tony's guitar was her only companion until she met Sebastian Quick. Seb was a little older, a lot wiser, and before long, he was Tony's way out, promising they escaped their stifling small town together. Then Seb turned 18 and split without looking back. Now, Tony's all grown up and making a name for herself in Philadelphia's indie scene. When a friend suggests she try out for a hot new up-and-coming band, Tony decides to take a chance. Strong, feminist, fierce as fire, Tony B and the Lilies are the perfect match, except Seb's now moonlighting as their manager. Whatever. Tony can handle it, no problem. Or it wouldn't be if Seb didn't still hold a piece of her heart not to mention the key to her future. A Theater for Dreamers by Polly Sampson. It's 1960 and the world's teeters on the edge of cultural, political, sexual, and artistic revolution. On the Greek island of Hydra, a proto commune of poets, painters, musicians, revealing dreams at their feet of their unofficial leaders, the writers, Shaman Clift and George Johnston troubled queen and king of Bohemia. At the center of this circle of misfit artists are the captivating and inscrutable Axel Jensen, his magnetic wife, Marianne, and the young Canadian poet named Leon. When 18-year-old Erica stumbles into their world, she's fresh off the boat from London with nothing but a bundle of blank notebooks and a burning desire to leave home in the wake of her mother's death. Among these artists, she will find an unraveling utopia where everything is tested, the nature of art, relationships, and her own innocence. The Breakup Book Club by Wendy Wax. On paper, Jasmine, Judith, Erin, and Sarah have little in common. They're very different people leading very different lives. And yet, at book club meetings in a historic carriage house turned bookstore, they bond over a shared love of reading and more than a little wine, as well as the growing realization that their lives are not turning out like they expected. Former tennis star Jasmine is a top sports agent balancing a career in single motherhood. Judith is an empty nester questioning her marriage and the supporting role she chose. 
Aaron's high school sweetheart and fiance develops a bad case of cold feet, and Sarah's husband takes a job out of town saddling Sarah with a difficult mother-in-law who believes her son could have done better. Not exactly the roommate most women dream of. With the help of books, laughter, and the joy of ever-evolving friendship, Jasmine, Judith, Aaron, and Sarah find the courage to navigate new and surprising chapters of their life as they seek their own version of happily ever after. A Dog's Courage by W. Bruce Cameron. Bella was once a lost dog, but now she lives happily with her people, Lucas and Olivia, only occasionally recalling the hardships in her past. Then a weekend camping trip turns into a harrowing struggle for survival when the Rocky Mountains are engulfed by the largest wildfire in American history. The raging inferno separates Bella from her people and she is lost once more. Alone in the wilderness, Bella unexpectedly finds herself responsible for the safety of two defenseless mountain lion cubs. Now she's torn between two equally urgent goals. More than anything, she wants to find her way home to Lucas and Olivia, but not if it means abandoning her new family to danger. And the danger abounds from predators hunting them to the flames threatening at every turn. Six Weeks to Live by Catherine McKenzie. Jennifer Barnes never expected the shocking news she received at a routine doctor's appointment. She has terminal brain tumor and only six weeks left to live. While stunned by the diagnosis, the 48-year-old mother decides to spend what little time she has left with her family, her adult triplets and twin grandsons, close by her side. But when she realizes she was possibly poisoned a year earlier, she's determined to discover who might have tried to get rid of her before she's gone for good. Separated from her husband and with a contentious divorce in progress, Jennifer focuses her suspicions on her soon-to-be ex. Meanwhile, her daughters are each processing the news differently. Calm medical student Emily is there for whatever Jennifer needs. Moody scientist Elaine, who keeps her mother at arm's length, nevertheless agrees to help with the investigation. Even imprudent Miranda, who had recently had to move back home, is being unusually solicitous. But when her daughter is doubting her campaign against their father, Jennifer can't help but wonder if the poisoning is all in her head or if there's someone else who wanted her dead. Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller. At 51 years old, twins Jeannie and Julia still live with their mother, Dot, in a rural isolation in the English countryside. The cottage they have shared their entire lives is their only protection against the modernizing world around them. Inside the walls, they make music in its garden, they grow everything they need to survive. To an outsider, it looks like poverty. To them, it is home. But when Dot dies unexpectedly, the world they're so carefully created begins to fall apart. The cottage they love and the security it offered is taken back by their landlord, exposing the twins to harsh truths and even harsher realities. Seeing a new future, Julius becomes torn between the loyalty he fears towards his sister and his desire for independence, while Jeannie struggles to find work and a home for both of them. And just when there seems that there might be a way forward, a series of startling secrets from their mother's past come to surface forcing the twins to question who they are and everything they know of their family's history. A Special Place for Women by Laura Hankin. For years, rumors have swirled about an exclusive woman-only social club where the elite tastemasters of New York City meet. People in the know whisper all sorts of claims. Membership dues cost $1,000 a month. Last time Rihanna was in town, she stopped by and got her aura red. The woman even handpicked the city's first female mayor. No, but no one knows for sure. That is until journalist Jillian Beckley decides she's going to break into the club. With her career in free fall, Julian needs a juicy scoop and she has a personal interest in bringing these women down. But the deeper she gets into this new world where billionaire girl bosses mingle with the cult obsessed bohemians, the more Julian learns that bad things happen to those who dare to question the club's motives or giggle at its outlandish rituals. The select group of women who populate the club may be far more powerful than she ever imagined. 
and far more dangerous too. Our second genre is historical fiction. The Girl in His Shadow by Audrey Blake, London, 1845, raised by the eccentric surgeon, Dr. Horace Crapp. After losing her parents in a deadly pandemic, the orphan Nora knows little about conventional life. While other young ladies were raised to busy themselves with needlework and watercolors, Nora was trained to perfect her suturing and drawing of illustrations of dissections. Women face dire consequences if caught practicing medicine, but in Croft's private clinic, Nora is his most trusted and secret assistant. That is until a new surgical residence, Dr. Daniel Gibson arrives. Dr. Gibson has no idea that Horace's bright and quiet young lord is a surgeon more qualified than even himself. In order to protect Dr. Croft and his practice from scandal and collapse, Nora must learn to play a new and uncomfortable role, that of a proper young lady. But pretense has its limits. Nora cannot turn away and ignore the suffering of patients, even if it means giving Gibson the power to ruin everything she worked for. And when she makes a discovery that could change the field forever, Nora faces an impossible choice remain invisible and let the men around her take credit for her work or step into the light, even if it means being destroyed by her own legacy. Hold Fast by J.H. Galinter. The Neapolitan laws are raging. Britain is on her heels and His Majesty's Secret Service has just lost its best agent, Thomas Gray. Deeply depressed by his wife's ultimate death, Gray resigns from the service and accepts an offer to join a lumber firm in Boston. But when a sea battle with a privateer forces the ship carrying him west to make port in neutral Portugal, Gray is approached with a counteroffer, become a wealthy man by selling out Britain's spy network to France. The French take Gray for a disgruntled ex-naval officer, lightly unaware that Gray has lost his wife to an unlikely shot from a French cannon. Now, after many years serving king and country, Gray seizes the opportunity to fight a covert war of his own. He travels to Paris and playing the part of an invaluable turncoat the French believe him to be, proceeds to infiltrate the highest levels of Napoleon's government. If he can outwit his handlers, outmatch his French counterparts, and outrun Napoleon's secret police, Gray may just avenge his wife's death and turn the tide of war in England's favor. The Woman with the Blue Star by P. Jenoff. 1942, Sadie is 18, living with her parents in the Cockrell Ghetto during World War II. When the Nazis liquidate the ghetto, Sadie and her pregnant mother are forced to seek refuge in the tunnels beneath the city. One day, Sadie looks up through a grate and sees a girl about her own age buying flowers. Ella is a rich Polish girl living the life of relative ease with her stepmother, who has developed close alliances with the occupying Germans. While on the errand in the market, she catches a glimpse of something moving beneath the grate in the street. Upon closer inspection, she realizes it's a girl in hiding. Ella begins to aid Sadie, and the two become close. But as dangers of the war worsen, their lives are set on a collision course that will test them in the face of overwhelming odds. Our third genre is cultural fiction. The Rock Eaters by Brenda Pernado. Threaded with magic, transcending time and place, these stories explore what it means to cross borders and break down walls personally and politically. In one story, suburban families perform Obulations to cattle like angels who live on their roofs, believing that their thoughts and prayers will protect them from the world's violence. In another, inhabitants of an unnamed dictatorship slowly lose their own agency as pieces of their bodies go missing, and with them, the essential rights that those appendages serve. The Great Escape tells of an old woman who hides away in her apartment, reliving the past among the beautiful ob objects she hoarded refusing all visitors until she disappears completely. In the title story, the children begin to levitate, flying away from their parents in their home country, leading them to eat rocks and otter 
to stay grounded. Swimming Back to Trout River by Linda Rue Fang. What Junie doesn't know is that her parents, Momo and Cassia, are newly estranged from one another in their adopted country, each holding close private tragedies and histories from the war-torn years of their youth during China's Cultural Revolution. While Momo gapples anew with his deferred musical ambitions and dreams for Junie's future in America, Cassia finally begins to wrestle with the shocking act of brutality from years ago. In order for Momo to fulfill his promise, he must make one last desperate attempt to reunite all three members of the family before Junie's birthday, even if it means bringing painful family secrets to light. Our fourth genre is science fiction. The Unraveling by Benjamin Rosenblum. In the distant future, somewhere in the galaxy, a world has evolved where each person has multiple bodies. Cybernex has abolished privacy and individual and family success are reliant upon instantaneous evaluations of how well each member conforms to a rigid social system. Young Frift is an only child of the staid gender struggling to maintain their position in the system while developing a friendship with the acclaimed bioengineer Shua, a controversial and intriguing friendship since Shua is veiled gendered. Soon, Fife and Shua unintentionally wind up at the center of a scandalous art spectacle, which turns into a multi-layered unraveling of the society. Fifth is torn between the attraction to Shira and safety of the family, between staying true to Zer's failings and social compliance when Zer's personal crisis suddenly take on global significance. When a young strad to do when the world is watching. The First Sister by Lyndon Lewis. First Sister has no name and no voice. As a priestess of the sisterhood, she travels the stars alongside the soldiers of Earth and Mars, the same one who owned the rights to her body and soul. When her former captain abandons her, First Sister hopes for freedoms a dash when she is forced to stay on her ship with no friends, no power, and a new captain, Sato Wren, whom she knows nothing about. She is commanded to spy on Captain Wen by the sisterhood, but soon discovers that working for the war effort is much harder when you're falling in love. Leto climbed his way out of the slums to become an elite soldier of Venus, but was defeated in combat by none other than Sato Wen, resulting in the disappearance of his partner, Hero. When Leto learns that Hero is both alive and a traitor to the cause, he now has a shot at redemption track down and kill his former partner. But when he discovers recordings that Hero secretly made, Leto's own uh, allegiance are put to the test. Ultimately, he must decide between following orders and following his heart. Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Rylan Grace is the sole survivor on a desperate last chance mission. And if he fails, humanity and the earth itself will perish. Except that right now, he doesn't know that. He can't even remember his own name, let alone the nature of his assignment or how to complete it. All he knows is that he's been asleep for a very, very long time. And he's just been awakened to find himself millions of miles from home with nothing but two corpses for company. His crewmates dead, his memories fuzzily returning, Rylan realizes that an impossible task now confronts him. Hurtling through its space on a tiny ship, it's up to him to puzzle out an impossible scientific mystery and conquer an extinction-level threat to our species. And with the clock ticking down and the nearest human being light years away, he's got to do it all alone. Or does he? Version Zero by David Yoon. Max a data whiz at the social media company Wen has gotten a first-hand glimpse of the dark side of big tech. When he questions what his company does with the data they collect, he's fired, then blackballed across Silicon Valley. With time in his hands and revenge on his mind, Max and his longtime friend Akito decide to get even by rebooting the internet. After all, in order to fix things, sometimes you have to break them. 
But when Max and Aikido join forces with an reclusive tech baron, they learn that breaking things can have unattended and have consequences. Our fifth genre is fantasy. Blackwater Sister by Zen Chow. When Jasmine starts hearing a voice in her head, she chalks it up to stress. Closeted, broken, jobless, she's moving back to Malaysia with her parents, a country she last saw when she was a toddler. She soon learns the new voice isn't even hers. It's the ghost of her estranged grandmother. In life, Ama was a spirit medium, avatar of the mysterious deity called the Blackwater Sister. Now she's determined to settle a score against a business magnate who has offended the god, and she decided Jess is going to help her do it whether Jess wants to or not. Drawn into the world of gods, ghosts, and family secrets, Jess finds that making deals with spirits is a dangerous business, but dealing with her grandmother is just as complicated, especially when Ama tries to spy on her personal life, threatens to spill her secrets to the family, and uses her body to commit felonies. As Jess fights for retribution for Ama, she also needs to regain control of her body and destiny, or the Blackwater sister may finish her off for good. The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. A century has passed since the gods fought and drove themselves to extinction. Now only their bones remain, promising great power to those brave enough to seek them out. As whispers of war echo across the land of Virgin, Fate follows in the footsteps of three warriors, a huntress on a dangerous quest, a noblewoman pursuing battle fame, and a thrall seeking vengeance among the mercenaries known as the Bloodsworn. All three will shape the fate of the world as it once more falls under the shadow of the gods. Our sixth genre is Suspense Mystery. An Anatomy of Desire by L. R. Dorn. Claire has it all, a thriving career, a gorgeous boyfriend, glamorous friends. She always knew she was destined for more than the life her conservative parents preached to her. Arriving in Los Angeles flat broke, she has risen to become a popular fitness coach and social media influencer. Having rebranded herself as Cleo Ray, she stands at the threshold of realizing her biggest dreams. One summer day, Cleo and a woman named Beck set off in a canoe on a serene mountain lake. An hour later, Beck is found dead in the water and Cleo is missing. Authorities suspect foul play and the news of Cleo's involvement goes viral. Who was Beck? An inf a follower? Were she and Cleo friends or lovers? Was Beck's death an accident or murder? The Plot by Jean Colitz. Jacob was once a promising young novelist with a respectable published first book. Today, he's teaching in a third-rate MFA program and struggling to maintain what's left of his self-respect. He hasn't written, let alone published, anything decent in years. Whenever Parker, his most arrogant student, announces he doesn't need Jake's help because the plot of his book in progress is a sure thing. Jake is prepared to dismiss the boasts as a typical amateur, but then he hears the plot. Jake returns to the downward trajectory of his own career and braces himself for a supernova publication of Evan's first novel, but it never comes. When he discovers that his former student has died, presumably without ever completing his book, Jake does what any self-respecting writer would do with a story like that, a story that absolutely needs to be told. In a few short years, all of Erin's Parker's predictions had come true. But Jake is the author enjoying the wave. He is wealthy, famous, praised, and read all over the world. But at the height of his glorious new life, an email arrives. The first in a terrifying, enormous campaign. You are a thief, it says. As Jake struggles to understand his antagonist and hide the truth from his readers and his publishers, he begins to learn more about his late student. And what he discovers both amazes him and terrifies him. Who is Evan Parker? How did he get the idea for his sure thing of a novel? And what is the real story behind the plot? And who stole it from whom? 
The last thing he told me by Laura Dave. Before Owen Michaels disappears, he smuggles a note to his beloved wife of one year, protect her. Despite her confusion and fear, Hannah knows exactly to whom the note refers to, Owen's 16-year-old daughter, Bailey. Bailey, who lost her mother tragically as a child. Bailey, who wants absolutely nothing to do with her new stepmother. As Hannah's increasingly desperate calls to Owen go unanswered, as the FBI arrests Owen's boss, as a U.S. Marshal and federal agents arrive at her Sausalito home unannounced, Hannah quickly realizes her husband isn't who he said he was, and that Bailey just may hold the key to figuring out Owen's true identity and why he really disappeared. Hannah and Bailey set out to discover the truth, but as they start putting together the pieces of Owen's past, they soon realize they're also building a new future. One, neither of them could have had anticipated. While Justice Sleeps by Stacey Abrams, Avery, a brilliant young law clerk for the legendary Justice Howard Wynn, is doing her best to hold her life together, excelling in a job with the court while also dealing with the troubled family. When the shocking news breaks that Justin Wynn, the contentious thing vote on many current high profile cases, has slipped into a coma, Avery's life turns upside down. She is immediately notified that Justice Wynn has left instructions for her to serve as his legal guardian and power of attorney. Plunge into an explosive role she never anticipated, Avery finds that Justice Wynn had been secretly researching one of the most controversial cases before the court, a postponed merger between an American biotech company and an Indian genetics firm, which promises to unleash breathtaking results into the medical field. She also discovers that when suspected a dangerously related conspiracy that infiltrates the highest powers of quarters of Washington. As political wrangling ensures in Washington potentially replace the ailing judge whose life and survival Avery controls, she begins to unravel a carefully constructed chess-like sequence of clues left behind by Wynn. She comes to see that Wynn had a much more personal stake in the controversial case and realizes his complex puzzle will lead her directly into harm's way in order to find the truth. The Next Wife by Kara Ruda. Kate had it all. A flourishing company founded with her husband, John. A happy marriage and a daughter, Ashlyn. The picture-perfect family until John left for another woman. Tish is half his age, ambitious. She cultivated a friendship with Ashlyn. Tish believes she's one. She's wrong. Tish Nelson has it all. Youth influence the life of luxury and a new husband. But the truth is, there's a lot of baggage, namely his first wife and suspicions of his infidelity. After all, that's how she got John. Maybe it's time for a romantic getaway far from his vindictive X. If Kate plans on getting John back, Trish is one step ahead of her, she thinks. But what happens next is something neither Kate nor Trish saw coming. As best laid plans come undone, there's no telling what a woman will do in the name of love and revenge. The Photographer by Mary Dixie Carter. As a photographer, Delta Dawn observes seemingly perfect lives of the New York City's elite, snapping photos of the children's birthday parties, transforming images of stiff hugs and tear-stained faces into visions of pure joy, and creating moments these parents long for. But when Delta is hired for Natalie Stubbs' 11th birthday, she finds herself wishing she wasn't behind the lens, but a part of the scene, and the Stubbs family's gorgeous home and elegant life. That's when Delta puts her plan in place by babysitting for Natalie, befriending her mother, Amelia, finding chances to listen to her father, Fritz. Soon she's bathing in a master bathtub, drinking their expensive wine and eyeing the beautifully finished garden apartment in their townhouse. It seems she can never get close enough until she discovers that photos aren't all she can manipulate. Our seventh genre is nonfiction. The Secret World of Weather by Tristan Gooley. 
in this eye-opening trove of outdoor clothes, groundbreaking natural navigator Tristan Gooley turns his keen senses to the weather. By reading nature as he does, you not only detect what weather is doing and predict what's coming, you'll enter a secret wonderland of sights and sounds you've never noticed before. Most fascinating of all, you'll discover distinct microclimates with every step you take through the woods or down a city street. There are unique weather clues that can be found on opposite sides of a tree and even beneath the blade of grass. And once you can read the forecast and every cloud, breeze, sunbeam, plant, and raindrop, you may well delete your weather app. Footnotes by Cassine Gaines. When the curtain rose on Shuffle Along in 1921, the first all-Black musical to succeed on Broadway, no one was sure if America was ready for a show featuring nuanced, thoughtful portrayals of Black characters, and the potential fallout was terrifying. But from the first jazzy beats of composer Noble Sissel and Ruby Blake, the New York audiences fell head over heels. Footnotes is the story of how Cecil and Blake overcame poverty, racism, violence to harness the energy of Harlem Renaissance, produce a runaway Broadway hit that launched the careers of many of the 20th century's most beloved Black performers. The Nine by Gwen Strauss. The nine women were all under 30 when they joined the resistance. They smuggled arms through Europe, harbored parachuting agents, coordinated communications between regional sectors, trekked escape routes to Spain, and hid Jewish children in scattered apartments. They were arrested by French police, interrogated and tortured by the Gestapo. They were subject to a series of French prisons and deported to Germany. The group formed along the way, meeting at different points, in prison, in transit, and at Ravensburg. By the time they were enslaved at the labor camp in Leipzig, they were a close-knit group of friends. During the final days of the war, forced onto a death march, the nine chose their moment and made a daring escape. Proof of Life by Daniel Levin. Daniel Levin was at his office one day when he got a call from an acquaintance with an urgent cryptic request to meet in Paris. A young man had gone missing in Syria. No government, embassy, or intelligence agency could help. Could he? So begins a suspenseful, shocking, and at times brutal true story of one man's search to find a missing person in Syria over 1810 states. Levin, a lawyer turned armed conflict negotiator, used his extensive Middle Eastern contacts to chase one lead to the next. And by route, he meets with a powerful sheik to learn who may have kidnapped the young man. In Dubai, he has drinks with the king of the Captagan trade, the it's this drug of choice that is fueling fighters in Syria and elsewhere to learn why. His search takes them to a bar in Amman where men purchase women, girls really, who have been taken from their families. Finally, he will track down the truth. Spirit Tech by Wesley Wildman and Kate Stockley. We already rely on technology to manage our health, sleep, relationships, and finances. So it's no surprise that we're turning to technology aids for the spiritual journey. From the apps that help us pray or meditate to cybernauts seeking the fast track to nirvana through magnetic brain stimulation, we are on the brink of the most transformative revolution in the practice of religion, an era in which we harness the power of spirit tech to deepen our experience of the divine. Spirit Tech products are rapidly improving in sophistication and power, and ordinary people need a trustworthy guide. Through their own research and insiders access to the top innovators and early adopters, Wildman and Stockley take you deep inside an evolving world. Digital Body Language by Erica Duan. Email replies that show up a week later. Video chats full of, oops, sorry, no, you go, and can you hear me? Ambiguous text messages, weird punctuation you can't make heads or tail of. Is it any wonder communication takes us so much time and effort to figure out? How did we lose our innate capacity to understand each other? Humans rely on body language to connect and build trust, 
But with most of our communication happening behind screen, traditional body languages signals are no longer visible, or are they? In digital body language, Dewan, a go-to thought leader on collaboration and passionate communication junkie, combines cutting edge research with engaging storytelling to decode the new signal cues that have replaced traditional body language across genders, generations, and culture. Our last genre is memoirs. Brat, an 80 story by Andrew McCarthy. Most people knew Andrew McCarthy from his movie roles in Pretty in Pink, St. Emma's Fire, Weekend at Bernie's, and Less Than Zero, and as a charter member of Hollywood's Brat Pack. In his memoir, McCarthy focuses gaze on a singular moment in time. The result is a revealing look at a coming of age and a maelstrom reckoning with conflicted ambition, innocence, addiction, and masculinity. New York City of the 1980s is brought to vivid life in these pages, from scoring loose joints in Washington Square Park to skipping school in favor of dark revival houses of the village, where he fell in love with the movies that would change his life. Filled with personal revolutions of innocence, lost to heady days in Hollywood, and with John Hughes in an iconic cast of characters. Sunshine Girl by Juliana Margulies. As an apple-cheeked, bubbly child, Juliana was bestowed with the family nickname Sunshine Girl. Shuttled back and forth between her divorced parents, often on different continents, she quickly learned how to be of value to her eccentric mother and her absent father. Raised in a fairly unconventional ways in various homes in Paris, England, New York, and New Hampshire, Juliana found that her role among the surrounding turmoil and uncertainty was to comfort those around her, seeking organization among the disorder, making her way in a world as a young adult and eventually an award-winning actress. Throughout there were complicated relationships, difficult choices, and overwhelming rejections, but there were also moments where fate faith and talent aligned, leading to unforgettable roles of a lifetime, both professionally and personally, moments when chaos had finally turned to calm. My Name is Selma by Selma Van de Pira. Selma was 17 when World War II began. She lived with her parents, two older brothers, and a younger sister in Amsterdam. Until then, being Jewish in the Netherlands had not presented much of an issue, but by 1941, it had become a matter of life and death. On several occasions, Selma barely avoided being rounded up by the Nazis. While her father was summoned to a war camp and eventually hospitalized in a Dutch transition camp, her mother and sister went into hiding until they were betrayed in 1943 and sent to Auschwitz. In an act of defiance and with nowhere else to turn, Selma took on an assumed identity, dyed her hair blonde, and joined the resistance movement using the name Margarita Dancute. For two years, Marga risked it all, using a fake ID and passing as non-Jewish. She traveled around the country and even to Nazi headquarters in Paris, sharing information and delivering papers, doing, as she later explained, what had to be done. But in July 1944, her luck ran out. She was transported to Ravensbrück Women's Concentration Camp as a political prisoner. Without knowing the fate of her family, her father died in Auschwitz, her mother and sister were killed, Selma survived by using her alias and pretending to be somebody else. It was only after the war ended that she could reclaim her identity and dare say once again, my name is Selma. <laughs>